about to be chat with Merlin. Photography chat with Merlin. Welcome to another episode of The Chat. We're uh, season three, episode 29, and we've got the Polaroid Jay with us. You want to take a moment to say hi, Jay? Hey, what's up, everybody? Good afternoon. I'm Jay. I'm from the Bay. <laughs> Jay from the Bay. That rhymes. I like that. Yeah, we out here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you practice that one before getting on... Uh, on the chat today? No. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just, you know, just, just improvising a bit, you know? <laughs> just rhyming and slaying, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. <clears throat> so. Yeah, it's been a while. So I haven't, yeah, I haven't, what, the last time I, you weren't even, wait, you weren't at Policon this year. No, I didn't make it the there. Yeah. The, the, like, yeah, COVID right. testing shit was, like, a little too intense for me to want to risk it. Oh, Okay. Damn, dude. Yeah, because it was a pretty big turnout. It was a little too crowded, though. <laughs> it looked like people were going like fucking buck wild. Like I saw all of the the YouTube shits there, or not the YouTube. Fuck, I'm dating myself there. I saw all of the like TikToks and Instagram reelies or whatever kids are fucking calling that shit yeah. these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting old, man. <laughs> dude. Yeah. Um, we are. Yeah, it was pretty crowded. Yeah, it was, it was intense, but it was cool. Like, I wish we had that turnout for 2020, but, you know, people were scared, so. Dude, 2020 was, like, that was a weird time. That was, like, super duper fucking weird, like, watching San Francisco, like, die in front of us. That, that yeah. was kind of fucked up. Yeah. But yeah. very grateful for it, because, like, I mean, we should all get, like, pins, like, you know, pull a Comberia one, like, you know. We were the ones yeah. that, like, risked the biscuit to, like, fucking come out to, like, some fucking Polaroid adventure when the world is dying from some, like, global pandemic that we didn't even know how serious it was when we went there. Yeah. Yeah, dude, we should. We should have had, like, a rubber of shirts or something. Yeah. We, should bug, we should bug Brian about that. And, like, for the next one, have, like, a OG ceremony where it's, like, you know, will all the real OGs stand up and claim your shirt? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of like the this pioneer shirt. Like, I yeah. they only sold it for like a little bit of time, you know. And then it was like, oh yeah, only pioneers that actually became pioneers can get it, you know. Dude, okay, I'm definitely gonna talk to Brian about this because I was just thinking about it. It'd be like fucking hilarious to like make a shirt that says like I survived Policon Bay Area one. <laughs> yeah dude yeah yeah that'd be cool yeah i mean like yeah i'm surprised none of us uh ended up being positive after that because i mean it probably just wasn't within our reach at the time so no we didn't get close yeah. enough to the um the quarantine ship when we were headed to oakland so we were, we were good yeah yeah that's true yeah we steer clear to that one <clears throat> yeah. yeah we we made it yeah <laughs> Man, that that was a, it was an interesting weekend. But I'm gonna be in Texas this year, so come on down to Texas, man. Well, man, dude, I can never. I don't know. The thing is, is like I just started a new job, so it's like I'm not. I'm still a temp, so it's like shit, man. Like they can let me go anytime, and you just need to take like one day yeah. off. Take take the Friday off, and like fly out Friday morning. I'll pick you up in Dallas. And, uh, yeah, then just, like, fly back Saturday, Sunday night. You'll be back Monday morning for work. Okay. Yeah. Wait, when, when is that? When is that? It's the last weekend of September. Mm, maybe. I bet. We'll see. Because I, 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 um, I have some stuff that I, so I got a letter in the mail from the DMV saying I have to do a smog check on my car. And I got my catalytic converter stolen earlier this year. Oh, shit. So I got it replaced by, so I brought it in um, to, like, a service place that my insurance is going through, like, the car insurance. Yeah. And they replaced it, and then the check engine light turned on. And then I brought it back, and then they checked it, they fixed it, and then it kept turning back on. And then I brought it to my mechanic, and he was like, yeah, the catalytic converter they installed isn't, like, 
what's that called? It's not like compatible with my car or something. Like there's issues. So it's going to keep triggering the check engine light and I'm going to fail a smog. So it's like, I called them earlier and I was like, dude, like I just got this letter today and I don't know what to do. And they were like, Oh, we can send you uh, like proof that because the catalytic converters are on back order right now. So there's nothing that we can do, you know? And like, I don't want to spend like, I think it was like $4,000 on a catalytic converter replacement, like out of pocket, you know, cause my insurance covered it. So it's like, I'd rather have it done through that instead of going out of my way and doing it myself, you know? So it's just a pain in the ass. So yeah, I got to battle that for a while. Damn. You just reminded me <laughs> like how ruthless catalytic but, converter theft is down there in America. Cause like, you know, y'all are going backwards yeah, towards dude. the dark ages. <laughs> yeah, because I got it stolen um, in front of my last job in the parking lot. And when I told security, they were like, oh, you shouldn't have parked there. I was like, well, you guys should have been doing your job and watching the freaking parking lot. Because, dude, like, you know, it got stolen in broad daylight. I was watching the surveillance footage. It was like a BMW pulled up. One guy, like, slid under my car, grabbed it. The other guy was a lookout, and, like, they were gone within, like, five minutes. Well, I, I mean, like, that's why they, dude, that's like, why they stole your catalytic converter. They got to make those BMW payments. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, like dealing not, with that. It sucks. Not to diminish how much it sucks that you had your catalytic converter so on like that. That blows. Yeah, that's, but I mean, at least the car still drives. Like I'm still able to make it to San Francisco and back, and still do my adventures. But I'm always just in the back of my mind. I'm just like, fuck. I really need to get that taken care of because it's like, you know, if I don't, then it's like, oh, I'm gonna have to deal with all this stuff in the DMV and you know, everything else. So, so yeah. Yeah. JP says even people with cages still get them. You should just straight pipe. Yeah. Your my, um, just like fucking straight pipe it and just give her. <laughs> well, my mechanic, he actually installed like a plate underneath. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, it's, I've been able, like I've been parking around SF and like, I haven't had any issues and it's weird because like, I don't even work in SF or Oakland and it got stolen in Milpitas. And like, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have never expected my catalytic converter to get stolen at work. So it's like, what the hell? Like I parked all over like Oakland and San Francisco and it's like, it's never happened up until that time. And it was like, damn dude, I'm at work and this, this thing is stolen. Oh uh, damn. Tommy, well, Tommy says, says and wheels. Someone tried to steal my wheels and cause my wheels to fall off. Man, that's some, like, fucking Flintstone shit. Like, (laughs) you fucking... That's so annoying, dude. I, God, I hate what the pandemic's, like, done to people. It's like, everyone's so desperate to, like, make a buck off of car parts and stuff. And it's like, come on, man. Like, I know times are rough, but, you know... That shit, Brian, Brian's here. <laughs> Brian, we were just talking about you. Dude, for the next... You were pol- talking about Policon. Yeah, for the next Policon Bay Area... You gotta make some shirts for like the OG people that were at Policon Barrier One. Make something that's like, you know, I survived Policon Barrier One or something, just like, you know, have the OGs like represent to be like, yo, yo, we did this thing in like the most ruthless time. Like we probably should have stayed home, but you know, that's how much we yeah. love Polaroid. <laughs> should have stayed in our hotel rooms or whatever. I should have gotten a hotel room that I don't know. Every single time Policon happens, I sh- I'm always like yeah, I'm going to get a hotel room, but I, but I never do. And it's like, I'm driving back and forth and I'm just like, Oh man, got to do it two days in a row, you know? Cause Dude. like where I live, it's like, I'm about an hour away from SF, like with traffic or, and then it could get worse. Like it could be an hour and a half. So, well, so, so yeah, I'm pretty, when cool. I'm on my own dime, yeah, I got COVID and all I got was this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, when I'm on my own dime in San Francisco, I never stay in hotels because they're way too fucking expensive. But there's oh. the Green Tortoise Hostel, which is like by all of the strip joints. Um, it's like near that square that has like all of the light up books and shit um, by the Hemingway Museum. Oh, that's by, uh, yeah, that's that's North Beach. Yeah. Like kind of near Chinatown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not too far from Chinatown. But the Green Tortoise Hostel there, yeah. you can get private rooms. And they're fucking hella cheap. Like, mm. it's like you're, I think we got like a bunk room and it was like 180 a night or something. 
and oh, that's not bad. No, it's not bad. Like you share the but bathroom, but like whatever. Like you have your own private room. Yeah, but dude, like I always wanted to stay in. Uh, there's this hotel in Japantown. Um, something I think it's like Kabuki Hotel or something. I've always wanted to stay there, and like it just looks so fancy, but it's like super expensive. <laughs> I think it's like 300, 300 a night. That's not bad for San Francisco, honestly. Like, I got put up mm. in some places when I was working for tech companies down there that were like boutique hotels that were like, you know, five, six hundred a night. And they were shit. Like, the hostel that Ooh. I stay in on my own dime were nicer than these boutique hotels. Mm. Okay. All like, right. One of them was like the, <laughs> right rec, the Rex Hotel or something. That was like fucking terrible. Yeah. JP says just get an Airbnb with the homies so that you could like you know spread the yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that yeah that's actually a good idea too because I remember seeing videos of everybody hanging out uh, this year for Policon at an Airbnb and I was like, damn, dude, I feel like I'm missing out on so much right now. Like. I could be like running up all these packs, just shooting like all the film, you know. Bri- Brian <laughs> says anime, anime fantasy, fantasy rooms. rooms. <laughs> yeah, they don't yeah. have that anymore, Brian. They they had that. They had a hotel in Japantown that had like different themes. Like they had an anime themed one, and like they they closed that hotel down, and they were supposed to turn it into like homeless housing or something. Or, I don't know. Shit. Policon frat house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, dude, Dane, I didn't even get to smoke you out at Policon. I, I all forgot, man. <laughs> dude, I'd like to see Zane smoke that, out. That'd be some funny shit. Yeah, I was supposed to smoke him out. <laughs> well, now now you have to come to Texas like, and get him smoked out there. Is it illegal there? Yeah, but is the weed, is the weed good out there? <laughs> That's a <your> question. <laughs> uh, I, Damn, this is a public oh, forum, man. so no comment. Oh, yeah. Um... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's a, no. I, okay. I I found some good stuff there, Zane. You just gotta like, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> but no comment. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, it's legal. It's legal here in California, so I don't know. It's, well, it's, I mean, we're, we're cool. It's like anything other than like guns and um, diminishing women's rights legal in Le- Texas now. Like I, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm yeah, still going, uh, even though it feels weird. Um, yeah. So you should go too, and it, for anyone that I'll enjoys try. Polaroid, um, come down to Denton, Texas. What's yeah, because Brian's been trying to get me to go every time. Like he'll he'll bring it up when uh when there's a photo walk and it's like, dude, you gotta go to Texas for uh, Policon, bro. Like it, they do it way bigger out there. Like you'll meet all these people. Like we'll shoot Polaroids, and I was like, damn, dude, yeah, yeah, I know it's, it's Texas. Everything's <laughs> bigger in Texas. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But there's no, I don't know. I hate, I don't really like hot weather. That's why I like going to San Francisco so much. <laughs> but dude, you're, you're like cold. you're part Filipino. Fog. It's like in in our blood to like <laughs> like hotness. I I hate hot weather too. Honestly, it's it's yeah. I, I sweat too much, man. Like I'm like I'm a sweater, so it's uh it's tough for me, especially That's lately. So yeah, what's up? What's up, guys? How how did you get into? Well, first off, like yeah, what got you into photography? Um, I actually got into Polaroid back in like 2002, but I wasn't like serious about it. Like my, I think it was my birthday. My dad had gotten me the Polaroid one, like the, the newer Polaroid cameras at the time, like the two thousands, you know, like okay. it was almost like a, you push the button on the back and it goes up. So did <clears> you so get into Polaroid first that. before you got into photography or? I've only, I've mo- mostly been all about Polaroid because I never, I've never taken like a photo class. Like I never, oh, yeah, I've never taken a photo class. Like, I don't know that. That's why when people talk to me about like different stuff, like ISO or, you know, all this stuff or like distance, I'm just like, I don't, I, I can't keep up. Like, I don't understand any of that stuff. So like, um, when I first got into it in 2002, I was just shooting for fun. I didn't really have any, any goals on what I wanted to shoot. I was just shooting stuff around the house, like shooting our dog at the time. And then like, after that, I was like, okay, I'm not going to mess with that. And then like 
fast forward to 2009, 2010, I had met someone at work that showed me an SX-70, like the original silver, silver tent camera. And he showed it to me and he's like, oh yeah, yeah this is an SX-70, this is a Polaroid camera. I was like, okay, whatever. I didn't find it impressive at the time because I was just like, oh, it's, it's probably, the film's probably expensive or you can't find it or, you know, whatever. And then like, I think like a week later he shows me the sonar and when he showed me the sonar, I was like, dude, I need that camera, bro. Like, it's so cool. Like, cause the way that it focuses, you know, like the way it's able to use sonar technology to, to determine how far something is and like capture it. And like, so I told him, I was like, dude, like if you ever decide to sell these cameras, just let me know. So he's like, okay. Then a few months pass and he ended up selling me both cameras. And after that, dude, I was just like on the hunt for like Polaroid cameras. I was just like checking thrift stores everywhere. And like, I was finding them all the time. Like it was so easy to find them back in like 2010, 2011. And then that's when I heard about like the impossible project. Cause they were selling Polaroid film at urban outfitters. And I was like, what the hell is an impossible project? And they had like these packs of 600 film, you know, and they were selling them and like, it was the fun for the impossible project, like, yeah. you know, getting the factory back on its feet. So then, um, I didn't know what that was all about. And I was just running through packs and I was like buying inspired film. And I think it was right. I think it was like 2011, 2010. That's when they started the impossible project. And I started trying to shoot that, but I was, I was having a tough time because that stuff was super, super sensitive to light and temperature. Like, you could not shoot in broad daylight. Like it would just like be washed out. Like it was so bad. Like even, I remember there was, um, there was issues with, um, there's this thing called like loose lamination problem that doc, uh, brought up. And like, it was this issue where like the top corner of the back of the pack would just peel off. And like, he was just like having to explain to people like, Hey, this, we're just starting this up. We don't know how to get everything, you know, situated because I guess like uh, I think it was like a Polaroid comes in like 24 pieces like the whole actual photo there's like 24 different components to make that to make a photo so yeah it was just like it was tough and then like I just kept going at it and then um, 2011 I started hanging out with uh, these people that I'm no longer friends with but um, we started this thing called Polaroid Gang <laughs> And like, they're from San Jose and I'm like, we just like, we were like really close. We we're always going to shows together. Like, and we'd always bring like, I got them into Polaroids. Like I got them like cameras. I was like, yo, we should shoot Polaroids together at shows and stuff. You know, we'll be poor Polaroid gang. Cause at the time, a lot of people were like running around with DSLRs, you know? And like, it was, that was the thing. So then I was like, no, man, we're going to shoot Polaroids. So we were just messing around. And then, um, fast forward, then like 2012, um, I remember, yeah, that's when I met Brian, uh, Brian Brooks. I met him at a photo walk when I was with my friends at photo booth in San Francisco. Cause we showed up late to the photo walk, uh, that day. And then we caught up and then I met Brian at photo booth. And then like, it was funny cause I had a blue button SX 70 and Brian had an SLR 680 and I was like freaking out over his 680 cause I'd never seen one in person and I've only seen pictures and then he was like, oh, you got a blue button SX-70. I've never seen one of those. And I was like, dude, you have a 680. That's more expensive than my SX-70, you know? Like, it was more rare. So, yeah, that's that's how me and Brian became friends. And, um, yeah, I was I was going out to SF a lot. to Because um, I was dating someone out there at the time, around 2012. And then I would go back and forth from Santa, from where I live, Santa Clara, to um, San Francisco, cause I would meet up with her out there or she would come down here and then like she would show me all over San Francisco. And I have like a lot of the Polaroids behind me are like shot around San Francisco around that time, like 2012 and stuff. So yeah, after all that, um, I had a bad falling out with those friends in 2014 and 2013, uh, that girl that I had talked about, she broke up with me. So it was like rough. And then like 2014, I got laid off. So it was like an, like all this stuff just started piling up. And then I was like, okay, the only thing that's consistent here is like photography. So it's like, I was like, okay, okay I'm just going to keep going. And 
that's when I started like thinking to myself, like I should just keep shooting portraits and just like meeting people. And then now it's like, okay, I want to meet everybody and shoot portraits of everyone. So it kind of, I think, um, I think that's just like part of getting older and like, I mean, you got to lose friends when you get older, right? Like you see, you can't stick with the same people over and over again. Like, like I, you know, for me, like, um, yeah, I met a lot of new people just doing that, like just uh, socializing and finding people with the same interests and like, oh yeah, I like, I love shooting Polaroid. So, so yeah, it's always been Polaroid. Sometimes getting older is a lot like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like the, yeah. your lower back hurts, you know, oh you got to deal with like all these pains, <laughs> growing pains. Dude, it's like that TV show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but we're not growing anymore. We're shrinking. It's like shrinking pains. <laughs> shrinking pains. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because <laughs> they, they always talk about like you, you're over the hill. It's like, when did the fucking hill move around? Like, you know, I don't feel like I'm over <laughs> the hill, but it feels like I'm falling apart. Where is it here? What do they mean by that? Over the hill? Like, you're going like. I was like, everything, what, everything is like uphill, though? and it's all like, you know, it's, and then, you know, you get to an age where it's like you can't go up any higher. So then you just start like declining and like falling down the hill and. So you don't you don't age like fine wine. You like you age like what would you age like? I don't know, like a bag of smashed <laughs> assholes or something. <laughs> how J- much do you think your wall of fame costs? Yeah, J- that's what JP's asking here. He says, "How much do you think your wall of fame costs?" I'm, I'm assuming that's the wall behind you. He's asking about. Um, the wall behind me. I don't know because a lot of it is like expired film or impossible. Oh my god, impossible film is so expensive. Um, well, with portraits, I don't know. I've got a lot of portraits that I'll never take again. Like, um, I have like a portrait of Doja Cat when I met her oh, back wow. in like 2015. Yeah. It was weird. Cause, uh, um, one of my friends, uh, Carlo, he hit me up and he was like, yo, you go to that Doja Cat show? And I was like, dude, I only have like one of her EPs on my phone that I'd been listening to. And like, <clears throat> I was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll swing by because uh, somebody, I forgot who else was performing that night. Oh, Lapalux from Brain Feeder. I don't know if you're familiar with Lapalux. No. He was performing that night too, um, but he's a music producer, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, They're both performing that night. So then um, I remember going to the show, and like, it didn't even sell out. It was in like the smaller room of the venue. Okay. And... Uh, Lava looked at finished performing. I, I took a pic- picture of him and then like Doja Cat finished performing. And I remember like watching like the security guards, like escort her out because she wasn't 21 at the time. So they had to get her out of the venue after she performed because it was a 21 and up venue. And I remember watching and I like ran out and I was like, dude, I hope she's still out here. And I was like, I was like, Oh crap. And she was like, she was on a, she was like smoking, cig- she was smoking a cigarette. And I was like, okay, cool. So I approach her and I'm like, hey, um, uh, is it cool if I get a porch, like a Polaroid? And she's like, yeah, I'm not famous yet. And I was like, yo, this yeah, is weird, famous, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, she said that. She said, oh, I'm not famous yet. It's cool. Like, and then like some other people came up. They're like, oh my god, don't you can't get a picture? And now I'm, that's never going to happen again. So, so it's so priceless. Yeah. I guess we just fun. Yeah, I have some good timing. I guess. <laughs> Dude, some of your celebrity photos are fucking amazing. Thank you. It's just, yeah, I try to, um, I kind of practiced it with, I mean, you know, because it's like with a lot of, or a lot of the Polaroid cameras with sonar are more like reliable with taking a picture, you know? Because it's like, you know you're going to get a good photo with it. So, and it's got the built-in flash. Like with Spectra, like Spectra was unbeatable, like, <laughs> that camera took so many so many great photos, you know, like yeah, like we lost we lost a really great film format <laughs> in my opinion. Like I loved Spectra. I just hated how like it was always out of stock though. Cuz I know that um you're familiar with Rick, right? Portrait? No, I'm not familiar with Rick. Uh Rick the Mint, he lives out in New York and he shoots a lot of celebrities. Like he does a lot of red carpet events. Okay. And 
I remember, I remember hearing about him and I was like, damn, dude, I want to do stuff like that. But like for me, and then when I finally met him, like we had a lot of, we shared a lot of the same stories where it was like, oh damn, it was hard to get this photo or hard to get that photo. And then he helped me get uh, a Polaroid Usher that one time at uh, the San Francisco Film Festival because he got me in touch with the people that went, that were in charge and he was like, yeah, he's going to be shooting on my behalf. So I just had to send the scans to them after, and I still have that Polaroid Usher. So I was like, yo, that's pretty dope. You know, I, yeah. I always wanted to meet him. He's a pretty nice guy, so it's cool. That's super cool. But man. it was really intense because, um, yeah, it, it was tough, though, because, like, I was driving, when I was driving up to San Francisco, uh, one of the people that was in the email chain told me that I wasn't going to have access to talent because I think she assumed that I was going to try to sell the photos or something. And I was like, dude, I'm not going to try to do any of that stuff. And then when they had me line up on the red carpet uh, with all the photographers, like she came up to me while one of our contacts in the email chain was standing next to me. And he's like, she was like, Oh yeah, I thought I told you you're not supposed to be here. You don't have access to talent. And the dude that was a contact, he was like, he was like, what the hell? Like, no, I already set him up here. He's supposed to be shooting for us. Like, and like afterwards, she's like, she's like, yeah, but next time you won't have access to talent. I was like, dude, there's, I'm not coming back. <laughs> I was just gonna do it that one day. I was like, nah. I don't get why people are dicks like know. that. That's fucked. Yeah, I, I run into that a lot. Like over the years, I've run into a lot of people that try to make it hard for me to get a photo, even though I'm just gonna be in there for like a minute, and I'll be out. Like there was one time where. Um, I actually got invited backstage by um, Clams Casino's manager because I hit up Clams Casino because I'm a fan of his stuff and um, we're friends on Instagram. And then uh, he was like, yeah, ask my manager for risk and blah, blah, blah. And then when I went back there, I remember like one of the venue staff was like, yeah, who do you know? Like, why are you back here? I was like, dude, I have a wristband. I'm allowed to be back here. And like, he was just like, give, the dude was giving me such a hard time for being back there. And I was like, come on, man. Like, whatever, you know, <laughs> I'm kicking it with Clams Casino, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that name. That's a yeah. cool name. I've never listened to them, but that's, I mean, we have to check um, them out now. I'm sure you're familiar with his work. He did a lot of early production for ASAP Rocky when ASAP okay. Rocky first started. Yeah, so he, he also did uh, the track I'm God with Lil B. He did the production work for that, yeah. But, yeah, his stuff is kind of... Um, it's kind of like murky, kind of dark, but I really like his speed production. It's really great. It's awesome. What, what's been one of your like favorite moments, um, shooting? Damn dude, there's too many. Like, okay. Top three. I don't know. Top three. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I think it would be like 2014 boiler room when I first met um, Chaz, uh, Throwy Ma, like that was the first time I officially met him because I had met him at FYF the year before, but it was for a meet and greet and I was so starstruck that I didn't know what to say. I just wanted to get a photo with him. <laughs> so then um, 2014 Boiler Room, I showed up super early to the venue. It was like this graphic design studio. And I remember like seeing him and I was just like kind of inching my way closer to him so that he would notice me. <laughs> And he was like hanging out with one of his friends and like at the time he was shooting film He had like this 35 millimeter camera that had like the Like the lens would like Jump out and it would like have like this little cover thing. Oh like a con I, I don't know uh, Contax uh, T TSV3 or something like that Yeah, something like that. It was like, like con it looked, Contax it was like that cool. and then there was Minox made one that was like that too Yeah, something like that but yeah, he had that camera and then I was like, Oh cool. And like, he like walked up to me and was like, Hey, you look familiar. Like, have I seen you before? And I was like, yeah, I'm always at the front of your shows. Like, you know, like <laughs> I was like, hell like scared. I didn't know what to say. And then like I asked him for a photo and then he's like, Oh yeah, we'll, we'll take a photo afterwards. And yeah, I was just, that was one of my favorite moments. Cause it was like, it's such a great night. Like, just seeing all my friends show up to the boiler room and it was my first time ever being at a boiler room event. So that was a cool night. And then, um, I don't know what my second favorite moment would be. 
Damn, that's a tough question, dude. You're, uh, you kind of got me unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, What's one of your favorite photos you've ever taken? Yeah, that's tough too. Like when you think about like the photo that you're like most stoked about or most proud of, like what's the first one that snaps into your mind? Oh, um, I guess this could be my second one. Uh, it would be like the time I met David Blaine after his magic show in San Jose. Cause <laughs> I didn't think he was actually going to let me take a picture. <laughs> like, yeah, I was, I was scared, man. Cause he looked kind of, you know, he, he looked kind of exhausted. He was probably, I think it was his tour or something. But I remember waiting out back with some other, some other dude. He just wanted to get his, like, he had this deck of cards that he wanted to get signed up, autograph. Cause, uh, David Blaine had his own deck of cards. And, um, I was waiting out there with him and then I was like, yeah, can I get a photo? Like, can I get a Polaroid? And like, yeah, you know, I managed to take one before he disappeared. So that's pretty cool, you know? <laughs> do you, do you like disappear in like a poof of smoke or just like into like a limo or nah, something? Nah, he just, he just walked into a tour bus and I was like, okay, cool. Like, that's all I wanted for the night is <laughs> one Polaroid. I didn't even an autograph or anything. But uh, there's that one. And then, um, who else? I'm really like, I really like FKA Twigs, so I, I think she would be on the list too. Because I managed to meet her twice um, when she first started like blowing up, and I remember like in 2014 she had a show at Great American Music Hall, and like she was nice enough to like walk out and like sign autographs and stuff for all the fans that were waiting outside, and that was pretty cool. And um, and then the second time was at the Warfield in San Francisco and I like waited by our tour bus and um, there were some other fans like waiting out there and like it's funny because uh, the Polaroid that I took of her she has her fist up and the thing is is that when I took that Polaroid um, she actually there's someone else like next to her that she had her arm around because they were trying to take selfies like there were these drunk girls that really wanted to meet her and like take selfies so, um, yeah, it's like you can see the reflection of the tour bus in the photo and everything, like the, the shine. And, like, right when I took it, she signed it, and then she also signed uh, my vinyl that I had with me, and then she was out. And I didn't realize, like, I remember I was, like, looking up, I don't know, I think I was, like, on YouTube looking up, like, FKA Twigs, like, Warfield, and someone had recorded video of Robert Patterson walking with FKA Twigs to the to the tour bus, but I didn't even notice Robert Patterson because I really wanted to see FKA Twigs, not Robert, you know, I was just like, whatever, dude, I don't care about this dude. Like it's all about FKA Twigs, you know, because she's awesome. Like I love that she's like just getting, I don't know, just rising in fame and everything and making it because she's great. Like, so yeah, I think that would be my third one. But I mean, there's so many other moments where I'm like, I'll just randomly think of moments where I, met someone and I'm like, damn, that was a pretty good day, you know? Like, <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's just great to get out there and just meet different people all the time. And JP says, and here, I think, uh, um, I think this goes back to David Blaine. Did he make you check your pockets and the Polaroid was already there? No, nah, he wasn't, he didn't even seem like he was in the mood to try to do any like illusions after his set. Cause, cause his set was pretty intense. There was this one, where he like he was underwater for like 15 minutes or something or some ridiculous amount of time yeah he was under there for a long time and then uh he explained that he had been training his lungs to be able to hold that capacity of air and all this weird stuff like he trains his body for certain things so that's how he's able to do a lot of his uh, illusions that's a trip but for like yeah, but for all the other stuff where it's like, oh yeah, I could, you know, figure out what card you have or something. That's that's something else. I don't know. I don't know how he does that. <laughs> so, what's what's yeah. been one of like the most insane moments you've had trying to get a photo? Um, insane moments. Uh, I don't know. A lot of the times it's been pretty easy because, like, people help me out. Like, 
I'll have friends that'll be like, Oh, Hey, do you want like a, you need a wristband or something, or do you need some help getting backstage? Like you're trying to get photos, right? And I'm like, yeah. So, um, I don't know. It's, it's been pretty easy. Cause I always like know where to go or how to approach people. Um, but there was one time where I did try to get Ch- Tyler, the creator, and that was, that did not happen at all because <laughs> I walked out to the back. So like he had a show at the work field in San Francisco and I thought like, okay, this is going to be pretty easy because I know where they where their musicians are going to exit. So like a couple like I had a feeling that this, this show was going to end. So I went to the back and as I'm walking to the back, I see this giant group of security guys. There's like probably like 20 of them, dude. And, um, I was thinking to myself, like, dude, there's no way I can get this. And, like, there's, like, this, like, this, like, barrier um, that's, like, 20, like, from me to the security guards, it's, like, about 20 feet or something like that. It's, like, super far. And then I go around it, and then I walk towards the security guards, and then, you know, I try, and then they get one of them's like, yeah, what are you doing back here? I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just going, you know, just walking over here. He's like, no, can you walk or walk back behind the barrier? I was like, no, dude there's no way I'm going to get these photos. So then, um, I stand behind the barrier, the music cuts off and the double doors to the back of the venue, like swing open and Tyler, the creator runs out <laughs> of the doors. And then there's like a van waiting and he jumps in. And as soon as he jumps in, like he's gone, like, yeah, it was, it was freaking impossible. So I doubt I'll ever get a photo of him, but I really do want to get one of uh, Frank ocean. Like, I love Frank Ocean. I would love to meet Frank Ocean. I'm like he's so awesome. <laughs> That's he's wild. on my list. Him, him, and uh, him and Taku. I really want to meet Taku. Like I've talked to Taku a few times, and like we message each other on Instagram. And um, I keep asking him, like, "Yo, when are you gonna come to the Bay Area again?" Because he did come out like a few years ago for a family trip. So I would love to go shooting with him. Maybe do like a eight two three photo walk out here in the Bay area with them and like have an event. <clears throat> I don't think I'm yeah. familiar with his stuff. He, um, he did, he does a lot of production work. Um, he did this album called songs to break up to like back in 2013, 2014. That sounds romantic. And that actually got me. Yeah. That actually got me through a breakup, uh, in 2013. So <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I like his, I like his stuff. And he started, um, this thing called hopes and dreams club where, uh, it was during the pandemic. Like he had started a photo community online and everyone would just, you know, show up on Patreon for different like projects. And then everyone would just go out and shoot and share their work. And like, yeah, he's awesome. Like he's like, he's like such a busy guy though. He's always like doing something different, like, Oh, new music work or, Oh, a new photo project or whatever, you know, <laughs> but yeah, someone I would love to meet. So that's cool, man. Yeah. You have some greetings from Ecuador here from Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Welcome. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the, um, come to this, uh, photography chat and Elisa. What's up, Elisa? Hello. Welcome. Welcome, man. So, I know you've talked oh, about Linda, it in uh, other places. Um, the story behind your glow in the dark SLR 680. Dude, it's it's funny because you brought that up. I actually have it right here. So it's, uh, it's a little uh, a little showing off. Yeah, I actually because dude, when um, when Second Shot posted it, uh, dude, I had to freaking buy it. It's so gorgeous. I had to have it, bro. Yeah. And um, I remember showing it to uh, SX Ivy uh, Ivan. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. He's from yeah. Oakland. Um, I showed it to him, and he was looking at it. And he was like, "Dang, it! It really like did a really clean paint job on it because you don't really see too much, uh, too many flaws in where the paint ends and begins and stuff." It's such a clean paint job, and yeah, uh, uh, Chrissy is asking if it glows in the dark, and I'm pretty sure it does, right? Yeah, it does. Like, it's just not, uh, it's just been in the dark, so it, it's not glowing right now, but it's got a lot of, uh, a lot of dents and things from, from the way I handle it, but, you know, that's, that's wabi-sabi, you know, like, 
ages like uh, Fire Line, I guess. I yeah, exactly. Know. Oh, and you got, you yeah, got, I got Power Ranger. Ready for, yeah. Had to, dude. Like, you know, I was kind of mad about uh, Reservoir releasing the, the first Power Ranger, and it was only for SX-70. Yeah. And, like, I ended up buying the 681 because I was like, dude, like, what the hell? Like, I wanted, I thought that it would work with the 680 the first time, so... It, it doesn't have enough yeah, juice, but dude, it's so, uh, have you gotten it yet? Or are you just waiting for yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I've been running, I've been running so many packs of comes through this thing. And like my other 680s, like they were prepped for the Power Ranger too. So it's like, dude, I'm just like running so many packs, you know, like. <laughs> dude, the first <laughs> time, like the I, first time I fired a pack through with the Power Ranger, it scared the shit out of me because I've never heard the motor work that fast before. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dude, it it just like spits it out super quick. Yeah, it's like yeah. fucking turbocharged. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was I was asking um, Matt for a battery pack because he was three D printing printing them for SX seventies, but he stopped emailing me, and I was like, damn, my hope he's okay. He disappears yeah. all the time. So, well, I just I saw that SX IV is also taking a break. I saw a post today saying, "Yeah, that, I saw like, that. I yeah. haven't asked him about it, but I hope everything's okay with him." Yeah, and I know Zane's taking a break too, so it's like you know we overworked all of the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everyone's just like, "Oh my god, I need a, I need this stuff." To, I mean, I still need my six seventy S fix. Cause I have a light leak. I think the Power Ranger actually caused that. Oh shit! Because um, yeah, because I was using the Power Ranger on it a lot. And then I started noticing light leaks when I shoot in broad daylight. Like, it would be in the same spot all the time. And I I had given it to Ivan to repair, and he checked it, and everything was fine. And then I started shooting in my backyard, and then um, I was getting light leaks. And I don't I don't know if I should send it to, you know, Mint, and then they'll be like, oh, you, you ran the Power Ranger on it. You know, like, <laughs> you know, messed up the... But I don't, I don't think I don't, I don't think know. a Power Ranger would cause light leaks. That seems weird because it's it's like it's on the bottom, yeah. So it shouldn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, if yeah, because it's consistent. If you go to Denton, you could probably get Zane to look at it while you're there. Not yeah, speaking for I should have brought it to Policon too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have brought it to Policon to get it figured out and like ask around because I, I didn't know what the issue was or I could probably try to reach out to um God, I forgot his name. Zane, Zane says that um, name, but... once he gets settled um he'll take a look at it. He's he's moving tomorrow so it's like I'd show you my six eighties but they're they're with Zane right now in Texas. <laughs> mm. He he did some really yeah. cool shit for me because he built me uh, a silver uh six eighty that has a focusing screen out of an SX-70, so it's got, like, the split focus screen. And um, Oh, yeah, I, the, the split focus. Yeah, and I, I ordered from uh, Retrospect the clear plastic, so the silver one has, like, just the clear see-through plastic, and then I've got a black 680 oh, you gotta, that he did the smoked plastic on for me. Yeah, and you got, like, Terminator cameras, bro. Dude, I, I, I like he he teased me. He sent me some pictures of him. I'm like, oh my fucking god! Like, I, I want I want to fire these cameras. Like, dude, that's awesome, man. Shit, I want to do that for my other six days, but like you know, get them modded and everything. But I'm like, oh, let's just keep them like that. You know, when when you like, need to I get was them thinking about up. getting um, what's that? Oh, uh, my six eighty. Yeah, you're thinking of getting what? Well, them well, I was thinking about getting a clear housing for this one, but but then it's like this is all glow in the dark, so it's like, why would I do that? You know, so you, but, gotta, um, you gotta make no, another. These one have already out. been serviced. Oh, they've already been serviced. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, this is, I had to send this back to um, Second Shot because he announced that he was going to stop repairs, and I sent it. Dude, it took a year to get all of my six eighties back, so. I, I have like two black ones in this one and like I send them all out to him and then um I sent two SX seventy sonars as repair credit just so that I can you know, I didn't have to deal with like paying him and I I don't know if he's ended up selling him or what, but yeah, he didn't 
he didn't charge me for the, for the repair because, like, for this glow in the dark one, um, it was still under warranty, so I, it still needed service. Anyways, it needed like a new solenoid because the, um, the sonar wasn't working properly. How weird! So, yeah, like it would um, it would extend, but it wouldn't go far enough to you know focus. So yeah, it was it was pretty messed up. Like one of my friends that we went out to, for coffee out in SF, and uh, I had it with me, and I don't know what what happened, but he lifted it up off the table and he dropped it like, like this high. And I was like, yo, dude. And then like, I thought nothing of it. And then I started noticing that the, um, it wouldn't focus right. Opto sensor. Yeah. And Zane, yeah, maybe my, Zane redesigned maybe my a thing for it. that. Oh, is it doing that right now? No, it's, it's fine. Oh, it's um, yeah, everything's good on it. It's been working pretty well. Like, I try not to bring it out too much. I like using the black ones because then it's like I could be kind of rough. Like, I feel like I should only use the glow in the dark for special occasions now. Like, bring it out to polish on and shit. You know? It's like it's like your <laughs> precious. Yeah, I, I love seeing all the tuned up six eighties though, because like I feel like Dan has the Moo Cow one, and the Moo Cow one fucking kills me. I love that camera. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Because, like, I was thinking about, like, making pins of, like, my 680 where it's, like, a glow-in-the-dark pin. And it's just, just an SLR 680, you know? Like, yeah. But I just don't know where to get one made. Hit up uh, Mike Padua and ask him about, like, how he does the pin making. Oh, yeah. That yeah. guy. Man, he, he's been getting lucky with finding cameras lately. Yeah, he's a really lucky dude. But, dude, the, like, the yeah. Polaroid love runs deep. Like, I just got this... Uh, yesterday, or no, two days ago. Oh, that was you. Yeah, yeah, I saw that video. <laughs> yeah, and then it, here, here's the film. Here's the film, bro. <laughs> dude, I need to get one of those next. Yeah, I got this in Hawaii. My sister has a matching one. Like the artist freehanded it. So I mean, people. I don't know. I don't think people. Uh, people know. I think the lines are a little too close, but whatever. I mean, those that know know <laughs> though, man. Tattoo. That's. Yeah. Yeah, Zane, you got to join the club, bro. <laughs> Maybe we could get Chris and Denton to, to tattoo us all up because uh, Dave was also talking <laughs> about wanting it a tattoo while we were in Denton, too. So, um, Zane, you got to come with us. We'll all get stabbed by Chris. Sick. Yeah, I, um, I remember there was someone on Flickr that had the SLR 680 logo tattooed on him. And I was trying to like look for a photo of it, but I couldn't find it on Flickr anywhere. Unless it's like a super old photo, but I was like, "Damn, that's a pretty, pretty good idea." Now that I think about it, because I had seen that photo back in like 2010, so I was like, "Damn, dude, maybe I should get the, the, the lettering of SLR 680 on me." I, I thought <laughs> about doing a 680, but um, it was like a total spur of the moment thing. Like, I'm in an artist's lodge here; that's where I'm recording from, and uh, there's like oh. 70 different types of, like 70 different studios here all different kinds of artists and there's a couple of tattoo joints here and um my friend uh lele um does tattooing and was like yo who wants a tattoo today and it's like i do <laughs> and i wanted to go see her and she's like so what do you want i'm like i don't know i just felt like i wanted to get stabbed today <laughs> and so we're trying to figure out what to get done and i was like let's do an sx70 because I, I like my 680s more, but the 70 is what fucking just sparked this whole love of, like, the whole camera thing. Because I remember seeing one and being like, oh, my fucking God, I want one. Like, it was such an object of desire. And then I saw how expensive they were. And I was like, I'm never going to have one of those. They're so expensive. And now yeah. I, I have more than I want to admit to having. <laughs> and it's just become a really Yeah, dude, see, that's, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I hate about, like, the... the film film camera market right now is just that like everything's so expensive like I remember back in like 2010 when I first started like it was so easy to just like jump on eBay and like buy buy it now you know like I've I've been able to get like all these SX70s in the past under like $120 like it was always like super cheap and they all still work like I was getting like Model 2s for like 80 bucks like 60 bucks and now it's like you know, it doesn't like 
the prices don't give anyone an opportunity to be able to like give it a try. And I hate that, you know, like, fuck, man. it's ruining, ruining the photography community, you know, it, it is. These, it's like, uh, increased everything. It, it's crazy how much people are fucking charging for some of these cameras. Like seeing like six eighties and six nineties going for like a grand. It's like, no, like, no, yeah. but yeah, people fucking kind of pay kind of it. Kind of yeah. It has, yeah. Well, and even to like yeah. a friend of mine runs um, like a, a high end U store that does like a lot of set deck and things like that. And he had someone come in mm-hmm. today that had a laundry list of cameras being like, hey, do you have like a Nikon 28 Ti, a Nikon 35 Ti, uh, a Contax, um, <laughs> like all of these crazy cameras? And he's like, are you buying these to shoot or are you just trying to like like do like a hipster like camera store kind of thing? And he's like, no, interested in shooting. And he's like, yeah, like most people wouldn't try to buy all of these cameras just to have to shoot. Like they'd be like, oh, I'm going to get a 28 Ti because I'm going to spend my like retirement fund on it. <laughs> Jeez, man. Yeah, dude. I hate that. And like as I had I a 35 so Ti once and like I have to admit it was one of the most beautiful cameras I've ever owned but um mm-hmm. it also doesn't really live up to the hype like I I was much happier with the point and shoot photos I got out of like this like big fucking beastly Olympus all weather camera than I was out of the 35 yeah. Ti <clears throat> the the zoom right the zoom 115 or whatever um, no, no, yeah, it wasn't even that. Camera. It was like, uh, it was called like the AF2 or something. Like it was like this big chonky motherfucker and it was so good. <laughs> I got it at a thrift store for like five bucks and, um, ended up just giving it to a friend that wanted to get into it. It was such a good camera mm. and it was consistently good. Like I never had any shit shots from it, but the 35 TI the fucking autofocus on that thing was so goddamn finicky that like it was super easy to get like, you know, more than half of the, um, the roll, like all blurry and shit. And then like fucking, Mm -hmm. if you don't notice you hit the panorama button, then you get those like stupid bars on the photo. Like, (sighs) yeah, yeah. It was a fucking gorgeous camera though. Like one of the sexiest cameras I've ever owned. Like I miss it (laughs) from like, looking at it but then i just hated using it so i ended up selling it before i lost money on it i think i still lost money on it but whatever jane says we have to get a graplex slr like <laughs> i don't know i don't know about that bro no. everyone's like jumping on that right now <laughs> i don't want anything big like i, I want something compact i want a running gun <laughs> with, my, with my cameras. That's why I love the SLR 680 because it's like, oh, I got a built-in flash. You know, I got autofocus. I can shoot at night. I can shoot at day and during the day. <laughs> I don't know about a Graflex, man. I, I, I don't know about all that. I don't I mean, need a Graflex. Graflex is too big. But, you know, I love this guy. This guy, I can run and gun with this guy. <laughs> See, I tried to, dude, I, there was one day I tried to run and gun with my Mami Universal at the at the art museum in Stanford, bro. Like, I had a tough time carrying that thing around and, like, having to focus and then do all that stuff because I was trying to use the um, the iType back. Oh, shit. Okay. So, yeah. Actually, I have it right here. Hold on. Let me, let me bust it out real quick. Yeah. Yes, today. Zane, that is a Wista. His his name is Rufus. And uh he'll be in Texas with me. Yeah, so I've got the iPad back. That's fucking cool, man. Did you make yeah, that or guy, did you get um, that from somebody? No, there's this guy on eBay. His name is Aaron. Uh he makes these. What he does is he chops brand new Polaroid cameras, like the ejection area, and then he modifies it so that um, you can put AAA batteries in here. Oh, the only cool. problem that I have with it, though, 
is that I suck at metering. Like every time I meter with my phone, like it's so inaccurate. Like, is that the goose? No, this is the Mamiya Universal, which is equivalent to the goose. It, it's kind of like a goose, but, um, but it doesn't have the same limitation that the goose does where you can only use Polaroid lenses with it. You can use whatever fucking yeah. Mamiya lens you want with that baby. Yeah, so it shoots 600 film. There but, he um, is. Yeah, dude, like... Dan, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, trying to shoot with this thing, and, like, my photos were either overexposed or underexposed. Like, there's no, like... There's no way for me to, like, get a good... Uh, good exposure out of this thing. So that's why I don't really... Um, I don't really use it. I need to buy one of... Uh, I was thinking about buying the Kex light meter so that I could put it up here. But I don't know how... Um, how good it is, so I gotta watch some reviews on it. But yeah, this thing is so freaking heavy, bro. I feel like I feel like I'm gonna break my wrist just holding it. Like <laughs> I don't know how Brian does it because Brian, is, that's why you need infinite metering. She had it, yeah. Like I said, I, I never took a photo photo class. That's why I don't I don't know these things. <laughs> like Dude, I'm, winging it every freaking time. I'm terrible with metering. I guess most of the time. And then I just like hope for the mm. best. And so far it's worked. Like I, <laughs> I honestly have no fucking idea what I'm doing most of the time. It's yeah. I use a phone meter most mm. of the time. Like I have a really nice, like fucking Minolta expensive fancy meter that can do spot metering and all that shit. And I end up using my phone most of the time because I forget it or just don't care. Yeah. 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 Cause I use the, I use my phone meter, the app, with my 670s and it's fine but i feel like it's more forgiving on the 670s but then when i use it for this it's like no nah, bro you're way off and it's like oh my god dude it looks so bad like yeah man like it's embarrassing i'm just like man i'm freaking I'm spent all this money on this thing and it's like damn i can't even shoot it right <laughs> this is like the only camera that i'm having like super like a super difficult time with like i just can't get it right. Like all my other cameras I'm fine with like the 670s and then the 680s and everything and the type 100, uh, you know, the peel apart, but Damn, um, I love peel apart. 670s so is partially auto and the higher speed manual modes. Oh, there's uh, Dan said incredibly legendary chat going on right now. And he calls his, his S680 is called the Moolaroid. <laughs> Moolaroid. I fucking love that. Hell one. Yeah. I don't know, like, it, it was funny, interviewing Dan was kind of funny, because the dude that did my intro music, I was talking to him about it, I was like, I'm interviewing this kid in a couple of days, who just, his photography kills me, but his style, like, kills me even more, I was like, he fucking reminds me of, like, a young um, Dom DeLuise, and Mocha's like, show me a picture of this guy, and I showed it to him, he's like, that kid's gonna have no fucking idea who Dom DeLuise is. And sure enough, I get like on the chat with Dan and I'm like, yeah, man, like I got to say, like you give me like wicked, like Dom DeLuise vibes. Like I fucking love that guy. And Dan's like, who's Dom DeLuise? And I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> How was the photo walk last month? Which one? Yeah, you've had a couple, eh? Um, oh, yeah, the San Jose one. I, it was fine. Like we actually had a pretty big turnout, which was pretty cool. I wasn't expecting so many people to show up because it was like, I don't know. I just didn't think anyone was going to show up because it's like, oh, it's San Jose. Like, no one really goes up to San Jose. But I'm actually, I'm hoping that I'm okay to do the next one this week because I don't want to miss out on that because I'm supposed to host it. Uh, JP, yeah, I'll bring it out next time. I'll try to bring it out next time. This thing's heavy, dude. And then Zane was saying that it's probably more on because there is, uh, it's partially auto and the higher speeds, even when you're running in manual, because he had to implement a yeah. similar programming thing when he was uh, reprogramming the OpenSX 70. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't do a book, man, because I remember talking to, um, Rick DeMint, DeMint about releasing a book and he did like a limited edition book for friends and family because he was worried about 
the permission from different musicians and people that he's come across. And like, he didn't want to have to like, you know, pay anybody for using their photos and stuff. So I'm kind of worried about that. I think if you do like a limited run, like a zine kind of thing, you could probably yeah. get away with that. Like you should do yeah. that for you do it. You should do that for Policon. Do like a limited run zine edition. Cause there's a like zines and things thing at Policon where you can sell that shit. But I think if you keep it like yeah. low key like that and do like limited production run, kind of make it like low fi instead of like a proper book that you like fucking put up and like, you know, promote and shit. Um, cause that'll probably be where people get pissed where it's like, you know, you have this like really nice high quality looking book that you're selling online, promoting online and is like freely available and they'll be like, I want my cut of that shit. Yeah, that's true. I thought you own the photo if you take it. Yeah. I was thinking that too. Cause I remember talking to um, Michael Jang in San Francisco about it. I was like, I was like, yeah, like if you take someone's photo, it's, Who's, whose photo is it? And he was like, he's like, it's my photo. Cause he was talking about how he's taken photos in the past. And he was like, it's not your photo. It's my photo. <laughs> like <laughs> it's funny. Like he's a really funny guy. Like he, was, he, he brought up a good point. Cause it's like, you're the one with the film and the camera. So it's like, it's, it's yours. You own the photo, but can be sued and have it cost you. That's, yeah. that's true. Even if you were in the right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that's true. Because Amer- America think, loves suing people. That's true, too, yeah. Yeah, I was worried about that with my t-shirt runs because um, for my first solo show, my friends asked me, like, oh, what three Polaroids do you want on t-shirts? So then I picked, like, FKA Twigs, Little B, and Asa Akira. And, like, I was, like, worried that I was going to get in trouble with the Asa Akira one because, like, one of my friends had asked her about it and she said something like, Oh yeah, just as long as it's like a super small run and not like mass produced. And I was like, yeah, I'm not trying to mass produce that because I really don't want to get into any like legal battles with anybody, you know? Well, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I think if you do like limited run things and small editions and, and whatnot, then there's like less of a chance yeah. for them to come at you because like, you're not going at it for a commercial thing. Like it's more of like a passion yeah. project kind of thing where it's like you may or may not even make or recover any money that it costs you to put it out there doing like a run of like five or 10 exactly. t-shirts kind of thing. Yeah. Cause like I did a, I did a Keilani sweater for one of my solo shows and then we ended up selling all of them. And I actually had a few left over at Policon that I ended up selling. So yeah, I'm just hoping that I never have to deal with, any of that because I'd, I'd just be, I would just be too scared to have to explain it, you know? But, yeah. You know. And I, I, could, I kind of feel like it, if anyone was going to come at you for something like that, then they're probably like a pretty shitty person. So, you know, yeah. it, I, I, I will give them yeah, a preemptive to go it. fuck yourself. <laughs> or it's like, I'm sorry, but I just got to make a little bit of money off of my art, you know? <laughs> yeah. The exactly. majority of the time, it's like you know we don't we don't get paid for Polaroid stuff. Like who's gonna want to pay for this stuff? Dude, and Polaroid's right? so fucking expensive. Like, kind of. I mean, right now, like I type, bro. Like it's not that bad. I type's not like, bad. Like and to, uh, I like shooting. I type a lot. Like since my cameras aren't with me right now, they're down in Texas with Zane. I've been using my One Step Plus a lot. <laughs> Which mm, it's, yeah. it's an okay camera. Yeah, you know it's it works. Cool, it works. Then you for don't have to worry about. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about the battery. Yeah, like, you know, and recycling. I, I did order a Power Ranger, and it's amazing, but it also scares the shit out of me because, like, <laughs> it's just. The fuck the camera sounds so fucking turbo with it that I'm just like, is this gonna make yeah, the camera explode? <laughs> um, yeah, it reminds me of like, uh, what's that called? Cause I don't know if you you ever watched Majonju? No. On YouTube, the Majonju show. Oh my god, dude! Hey, if if it wasn't for Majonju, I wouldn't know how to shoot Polaroids because like when I first started getting into it in 2010, that's when I came across his videos. And he would always talk about, like, you know, 
Polaroid stuff or Lomo stuff, he would have tips and tricks. But there was one video where he loaded up his S670 and it, it did that turbo mode. Like it just spit it out really quick. And I was like, holy crap, what kind of battery is in there? You know, like early impossible project batteries, you know, but yeah, it just reminded me of that. But he's a great guy. I'm always like telling him, I'm like, dude, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have gotten this far with this photography. I would still be shooting crappy photos, you know? <laughs> so that he he was your inspiration yeah, yeah. for Polaroids then? Yeah, because he's based out in Japan. Okay. And um, he was uh, he was working at the Impossible Project space out there for a bit. Oh, cool. And then, yeah, he's like a pioneer too, so he's like one of the OGs. But um, he's not really active in photography anymore. I don't know what happened. I don't know. He's been dealing with like issues with like you know getting film. I don't know. I don't. I don't know the story. But I always got to remind him. I'm just like, yo, shout out to Majonju. Yeah, is that? Do, yeah, do you have an Instagram? It, it would. I think it would be just be Majonju. Okay, let me see if I can find. I got my computer. I think. Here. How I, do you spell it? Oh, there. I can't me. remember. Mitchell yeah. Mitchell Jones. What My, was the Mike, last Michael Polaroid Jones? I took? Yeah, I like his yeah, hair. Man. He's got he's got a good style. Yeah, he's pretty cool. <laughs> Dude, it's funny. It, he was also working for Lomo for a bit too, and he would always like talk about because he would start his YouTube his YouTube videos like, "Hey, what's up, all you camera loving people?" Welcome to the Mid Jones Show, where we talk about super cool cameras and we talk about super cool things. Like, <laughs> it was great. Like, I loved it, dude, because it was like, I don't know, I missed that Impossible Project era where it was like, you know, you were getting newsletters and then everyone's like, oh, this is how you shoot the newest film and shit like that. You know, like, because there was like, remember Push Film? I don't know if you remember Push Film. No. So I, like I, this, I missed, I missed it. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, it was like an iteration of um, of SX-70 film where they told you to, like, increase heat on the film or get it colder, like, push it in different directions temperature-wise or light-wise, and you would get, like, experimental results. But, okay. um, so yeah, you were saying you missed out on that era? Yeah, I, I missed out on the whole impossible thing. So <laughs> I got I got into film photography and Polaroid photography like pretty late in the game. So it's like I've been doing photographic stuff since like the mid nineties, but it was mostly mm -hmm. all digital with like the janky old digital cameras and then like, you know, other, other digital cameras. I never really did a lot with film until I moved to Toronto. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to Toronto in 2017, I fell down this crazy rabbit hole of film and, um, yeah, I caught like the tail end of um, of the whole impossible thing, and um, the person that got me most stoked on on shooting Polaroid um, was actually Jason Lee. I, I watched this like interview where he was talking about like eight oh, by yeah. yeah, he was talking about like eight by ten Polaroids and how it's like the most honest and genuine image that you know he's found that you can create with it. And I kind of fell in love with that whole thing. And I'm like, man, I want to shoot 8x10 Polaroids. And then I was like, holy fuck, 8x10 Polaroids are fucking expensive, bro. Like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, yeah, dude. Yeah, Jason Lee, bro. Like, I get so jealous of his work because I'm just like, man, he was in the right place at the right time every time, dude. And at he had, every like, the, time. What was, well, he, was, he was friends with Spike Jones too, right? Or he, yeah, he yeah. Was friends with Spike Jones, right? He, he's Spike, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you know, and I just, wish I had those connections. And it's also cool to like most of the photographers I like look up to and admire and whose work inspires me also happen to be skateboarders too. And it's just kind of interesting because like that eye for like looking for skate spots translates really well into like having an eye, uh, having an eye for looking for like photos and stuff. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, like Jason's been the most inspirational photographer for me from a Polaroid perspective. But I think like my most favorite photographer. Well, photographers would be Ed and Deanna Templeton. I love the fucking work both of them do. Oh, yeah. I love those guys, too, dude. Like, <laughs> I went to the San Francisco Art Book Fair, which is actually this weekend. Uh, they're kicking it off tonight, but I can't go because I've got COVID. But um, I remember 
a few years back, they had a book signing, both of them at the same time. And I was just so stoked because like I had um, this issue of Archetype that I had from like years ago and it had Ed Templeton's stuff in it. So I got that autographed and then it came with a little zine with photos of Deanna and I was like, yo, like I got it signed for, by both of them and I took Polaroids of both of them too. I'm like, they're so nice. I love those guys so much. Like they're kind of quiet, but they're so like chill and like down for photos and like their work is just amazing. Like wow. That's such beautiful work. Power couple right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, dude. <laughs> well, and that's the thing that's been cool guys, is yeah. like, I haven't had a chance to meet um, uh, the Templetons yet, but like, you know, Jason's just like such a chill, cool guy. Uh, Grant Britton is such an amazing fucking dude. Like he's one of the most chill people I've ever been able to spend time with. And like the stories he has and the amount of knowledge he has is just like mind blowing. Like it's, um, Mm. it's cool. There's a lot of really like giving people in the photographic community. All all you got to do is ask. Yeah. Like Ray, Ray Barbie. I always want. I want to meet Ray Barbie for sure. He, he seems all the chill too. Dude, I've been trying to get him on the chat for a little while now, and like, oh, yeah, we were emailing back and forth, and he like agreed to it, and then he like ghosted me, and that's like, out of yeah. all out of all the ghostings I've had happen to me, just like you know, dating and in general and everything, I think like Ray Barbie's ghosting hurts the most. <laughs> No oh, man. I so, mean, it, he is a pretty busy guy. Oh, dude, they're also uh, fucking busy. Because, like, it's the same thing with, like, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, because um, I'm trying to get him on to do, like, a follow-up. Yeah. Because the first interview I did with him got kind of, like, cut off and janky because, like, he was on an Instagram break. So I had to do, like, a weird thing to, like, get him on to IG through, like, a Zoom portal shit. Um, oh. So we've been talking about like when he comes back from his like most recent Instagram break, then we'll, we'll do an episode with him to talk about like his most recent books. Cause he's released a couple since the last time we've talked. So that'll be a lot Sick. of fun. I hope it works out. I, I'm yeah, sure it will. Dude. And it, it, it would be really cool to get Ray on sometime. Cause like I fucking love his, and his music, like his uh, dude, it's such a talented guy. Like it's, yeah, it's wicked wild. What was the last picture we snapped? Um, we last snapped. What was the last? I don't even remember. Take? Wait, Damn, I don't. Know. It was from the photo walk, uh, the recent SF Instant photo walk. I think that was like the last time I did any shooting. I haven't really been shooting lately because I'm waiting for. Um, I was supposed to go to the Bay Area Film photo walk last weekend, but then I tested positive for COVID and I got COVID, and it's been pretty brutal. And, like, I'm kind of bummed out about that. But then I have my photo walk coming up, the SJ, the San Jose photo walk, which is next Saturday, and then San Francisco instant photo walk at the end of the month. I don't even know where we're meeting up, but I do want to meet up at the beach again. That was pretty dope. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Um, Oh, wait, wait, what was the last picture you took? Yeah. The last picture I took, well, I haven't been shooting much either because I've been like a wicked creative funk the last few months, but Mm. I did, um, I did load up the old trusty F100 with, uh, my very first roll of Cinestill 400D. Um, I'm excited to see how it turns out, but, um, there's a, there's an old, um, metalworking welding shop that's been around in Vancouver for like a hundred years or something. And, um, the city raised their rent by like five grand and like the old dude that runs, it's like, fuck this, I'm retiring. And so like after like over a hundred years of operation, they're like shutting it down. Um, and a friend of mine was like, yo, I'll take you over there. Like, you know, go take some pictures cause you like all this derelict shit and stuff like that. And so Mm -hmm. those are some of the last pictures I took today was just wandering around, um, this old fabrication shop that's been around for like a hundred years and seeing these like massive old machines that have just been in use for like decades. <laughs> like, so, so Merlin, would you consider yourself an urbex now? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Well, so I don't even really consider myself a photographer, honestly. Um, mm. so I don't think my work is like that good to denote that. Um, but also like I, I shoot to like catalog things, things that are important to me or things that I feel should be important. And so mm. I feel more like an archivist than I do a photographer. Dude, that's how I feel, because I'm just, like, I mean, a lot of the stuff that, that's on my wall right now is just, like, buildings or structures or just stuff that I wanted to shoot just because I thought it would look cool on film. And then I also have, like, portraits, and then it's, like, yeah, I feel like maybe we're just artists, you know? We're yeah. Polaroid artists or film artists or whatever, because we're just embracing the the format and experimenting with it and just trying to figure it out you know yeah like that that's how i feel about it. it's just like i don't know cataloging things that looked interesting or people that are important to me and i like the things that yeah. like jason does where um he repeats photos so he'll like take a photo of a place and then like you know a few years later goes back and like takes another photo of the oh same place. yeah and um see i wish i i wish i did that because um well you can I'm only start now Levi stadium no, because, so the thing is that uh, when they were building Levi Stadium, I remember my mom was like, oh, you know what we should do? We should take pictures of it as it's being built. And, like, at the time, Peel Apart was still available. And now that I look back at it, I was like, dude, I should have shot that on Peel Apart. Oh, that would have been such a good like, project for Peel Apart. Yeah, and I just didn't think about it because I was just like, ah, it's just, it's just a stadium, you know? Like, it's going to be there, but then from a, you know, getting it built from the ground up, like I can, as I'm thinking about it now, I remember how it looked without the stadium. It was just a grass field and an empty parking lot. Now it's just this giant structure and it's kind of scary, you know? So, yeah, so many missed opportunities. I just didn't think of, but yeah, it's progress, man. Progress. Know. Yeah. But hey, at least I got like Polaroids of Corgis. So that's a good series, right? Like maybe I could do a zine on that. Dude. <laughs> Who doesn't love fucking corgis? I love corgis. Dude, have you seen that one? It's I think he's on TikTok, but also might be on Instagram. It's like a husky corgi. It's fucking so hilarious. It, it has a it has a face of a husky, but it's like long like a corgi. No, it's like it's like a husky <laughs> body, but tiny with like little like corgi legs. So it looks like someone like oh like chopped off half the legs off of a fucking husky, and then like shrunk it a little bit <laughs> <laughs> oh i feel like i've seen like dogs like that at corgi gone there's still, a lot of different mixed breeds of corgis dude it still howls like a fucking husky though like <laughs> damn that's just fucking yeah funny. i was like I, I was out in sf like a few weeks ago and then someone told me that corgi con was happening that day and i was like damn dude i missed out because i like going out there but the traffic just gets bad because they have it at the beach. Oh, shit. Yeah. So everyone just piles in, you know, and then there's traffic and everyone's fighting for parking spots. And, so, yeah, it's just easy to shoot them on uh, peel apart with a Holderoid because it's just a quiet click. It doesn't scare them, you know? Damn, I miss peel apart so much. <clears throat> I don't. Really? I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying that. Yeah, I, I hated peel apart because when I was shooting it, I was, uh, I shot with a Holgeroid and every time I was out anywhere, I would have like a bag, like my cam the bag that I would be using, it would just be full of trash. Oh, and yeah. then like my photos would stick together. There wasn't a proper, um, you know, film container. Like no one really had 3d printers up, up until now. Like if I had these, like Brian gave me this one. I don't know if Brian's still in the chat, but he gave me this one. Oh, that's a dope one. It's so big. Sure. Yeah, and it has the Polaroid Originals logo on it. He printed it for me. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Dude. That's got a lid, too. I gotta ask him yeah. about one of those. That's so nice. Yeah, so... Brian, Brian, if you're still on here, you know, let me know how much you want for one of them. So I'll, I'll buy one of those off you. Yeah, it looks like Ashley's interested. Hello, Ashley. Ashley Tuff in the building right now. 
So I got to ask you, because everyone's probably wondering about it, and this is like, you know, probably the most important question in the whole chat. Yeah, go ahead. What got you into making pizzas? Oh, pizza. <laughs> um, so, uh, I think I have to get a little personal. Um, like a few years ago, back in like 2018, um, I had found out I had thyroid cancer. And oh, yeah, so that's why I have like this giant scar on my neck. Oh, damn, man. Yeah, so I had to get it removed. Um, but uh, at that time, I remember I was resting at home like for like a week and I was watching a lot of YouTube, like just jumping on there and like I was thinking to myself like, oh yeah, like how do I make pizza? So I was watching a lot of pizza making videos and like all these junk food videos and stuff and then I thought nothing of it. I was just like, okay, whatever. Like I probably won't ever need to make pizza or try to make pizza. But uh, fast forward to the pandemic, um, I remember like, my family was like trying to find pizza. Cause I was like, yeah, where, where can we buy pizza? And couldn't find it anywhere. Like you couldn't, you know, like the, the store bought ones that are like, you know, frozen, like they ran out at the supermarket. And, um, so I was like, damn, maybe I should try to learn. So I was watching a lot of, uh, I watched a lot of tutorials on how to make pizza. And like, it's always the same way to make it. Like it's always just some yeast, some flour, some water, some freaking, it's super easy. Like, and then when I started doing it, when I first learned, like my first few pizzas were like super crappy. Like they didn't, they weren't great because I didn't put enough, like, you know, I wouldn't, I would put too much flour or it would be the wrong type of flour. I wasn't using bread flour. And then I started learning about different flours and then, yeah, I just kept making pizzas. But, um, right now I haven't made a pizza in about like two months because because of my new job, because I don't know if I would need to work overtime, because I've been working a lot of overtime lately. So it's like, for me, when I make pizza, or if I'm planning on making pizza, I prep the sauce on the dough, like at the beginning of the week, like Tuesday or Wednesday. And then like for the dough, I let it proof in the fridge until Friday. And then Friday morning rolls around, like I'll take it, <coughs> I'll take it out of the fridge and I'll have it sit on the counter for the rest of the day. And when I get home from work, it's risen and it's ready to, um, you know, to, to be made into a pizza. And then I just throw all my toppings on it. But, uh, my favorite pizza is the freaking, uh, what's that called? Detroit, Detroit or grandma style. Like, cause I have the, the type of pens, like the pen that I use for my Detroit style, um, is actually a brownie pan that I found at target for like five bucks. Nice. And, it's good for getting that nice, like crispy, cheesy crust, dude. Like, oh man, like I really need to make pizza soon because I've been craving it. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, damn. <clears throat> and it's great because, like, you know, if you're making your own pizza, you get first dibs. You yeah, know, that's true. Yeah, and you can make it however you want. You know, and <clears throat> awesome. I love pizza, man. Dude, that, yeah, pizza boys for life. You, you should get like you should make some t-shirts like pizzas and Polaroids. <laughs> I know, yeah, dude. I would, dude. That would be cool if like, you know, it's funny because the last instant photo walk we had, we met up at a pizzeria. <laughs> pizza little <OJ. laughs> Pizza, yeah, that's true. Yeah, pizza little J. <laughs> I didn't even really realize it when we met up at that pizza place. I was just like, oh, we're going to meet here because it's convenient and it's outdoors and we don't have to worry about COVID. But now that I look back at it, I'm like, damn, that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, that pizza was awesome. So, Dude, yeah. So you got to come to Texas now. I'll I'll try. I'll see. Because uh, I'm not really a, I'm not really the type to travel. Like, last time I traveled was to Hawaii. Um, back in like 2018, 2019, I think it was 2018 to go see my sister. Cause she was living out there and I stayed at her place out on the military base cause her husband's in the Marines and it was, it was cool, but you're, I had to do a lot of driving. You're overdue for travel then. Yeah. I, I really need a vacation too. Cause every time I quit a job, it's like, 
I'm working the next week. I never give myself enough of a, you know, time off. So, so yeah, I'm overdue in, for a vacation. You're in San Jose, right? Uh, Santa Clara. It's right okay. next to San Jose. I'm not too far from San Jose, but yeah, that general area. Yeah. Let's see how much a flight is huh. from San Jose. Kind of near the airport. Yeah, because I live near the airport too. That's why you hear the airplanes just flying in and out. And I remember like hearing about people that moved into this neighborhood complaining about the airplanes, but it's like, bro, like, <laughs> do you know where you live in right now? Like, and people even complain about the sound from Levi Stadium, and it's like, dude, you live next to the stadium. What do you expect? Like, of course you're gonna hear like Coldplay at like 10 p.m. <laughs> cool. Coldplay, <laughs> wankers. Yeah, they actually played not too long ago, and uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers are playing in a couple of weeks, I think. All right, I'm looking. So, yeah, I'm looking at flights here for you. Let's see. <coughs> Let's see what we can find. So, fucking Frontier has a nonstop round trip that'll get you SFO. To Dallas and back for three hundred and thirteen bucks. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all, man. Oh yeah, Red Hot Chili Peppers with Thundercat. If you go, I'll pay for half your flight. No, man, don't don't <laughs> see now you're pressuring me, and then it's like I gotta explain to my boss like, hey, you be like, like, hey, I gotta take a. This weird bearded guy from off. Canada is like pressuring me to go to a place. <laughs> I gotta take some time bad. off for this nerd. Sh- <laughs> I gotta take time off for this nerd shit I'm about to do. <laughs> I, I told my boss <laughs> about it, and he was like, "That's shit. super fucking nerdy, but like cool." <laughs> dude, speaking of nerdy, dude, like in a couple weeks they're having a freaking arcade convention over here, what? and I'm so excited for it, bro. Yeah, like it's called California Extreme. And every, I think this is the year they actually brought it back because of the pandemic. But what they do is they turn the whole convention center into a fucking arcade, bro. And they dim the lights and everything. And it's so awesome, bro. Like you just hear video games and you see all the lights. Like I'm, I'm like super excited for it. So I'm do hitting they do that, that up at, at the end of the month. Uh, they do that in Moscone? Wait, oh, no, not Moscone. Oh, okay. No, it's uh, over. It's here in uh, the Santa Clara Convention Center. Arcades, on arcades Polaroids. on Polaroids. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try because I know my 670s can shoot in low light. Oh, Brees is here. Yeah, um, Bree, you know, she like it was cool seeing Brees pull up to Policon in her in her work uniform because <laughs> I haven't wanted her to show up too because trying to get all the S. Dude, I like so missing out on Policon Bay Area was like the first time I've had FOMO since this whole fucking pandemic started. I was just man, like, I wanted you to go show up too, bro. I know. <laughs> I, I I was close. If if it wasn't if it wasn't for the requirements to test to come back, I would have I would have come for sure. But it was just like that possible chance of like if I caught it while I was down there, I'm like. Yo, I can't afford to fucking isolate in San Francisco for like fourteen days. Oh yeah, that that's would, true. Yeah, it's like affording like four days to go to Policon is like enough, but like <laughs> having the spring for like another fourteen days to like isolate somewhere, I can't afford that. Oh yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, Brisa, I didn't mean to call you out. I just sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't, if you don't make oh. it, then I will definitely be in san francisco um we told you yeah yeah but i don't want to get like in trouble for <laughs> fraud gonna, either like you know <laughs> they're all gonna like what what are they gonna do they're gonna freaking they're gonna like csi it or what you know like hey we got some advanced technology that i don't know they, they, they can it. have like fucking david caruso like <laughs> fucking do like the glasses move on me at the airport it's like when you said you had a negative test that was a lie or some shit like that with like yeah, wild yeah. music in the background. <laughs> Policon den- den party at my place, y'all. I don't know if you want to do that, Zane. Things get pretty mm. fucking weird. 
James Wilder. Yeah, he wants he wants to wild out. All right. We're gonna get we're gonna get weird at Zane's house. You gotta come to Texas. Get weird. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. If you don't make it down, I definitely Brian said he'll pee on a stick for you. (laughs) (laughs) That's not the kind of test that I need. (laughs) I'm trying to I'm trying to get converted at my job because my current health benefits suck. All right. Well if you don't make it out, I will most likely Barring another massive COVID outbreak, or if monkeypox doesn't fucking kill us all, I'll be at. Oh um, yeah, I forgot about that thing. Yeah, apparently it's like sweeping everywhere right now. It's all over Canada. Like it's, it's cool. So, Zane wants karaoke. I don't mm. know, does anyone really ever want karaoke though? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Polaroid karaoke. Polakoki. Polakoki, <laughs> that'd be cool. That'd be actually pretty cool. Having Pol- karaoke at Polacon. Polaroki, there we go. <laughs> like, and then you see like just the most randomest people just like be able to just like sing, you know? And it's like, holy crap, dude! So yeah, no worries. We should have that at Polacon, but then we gotta get like the shitty electronics division of Polaroid to like sponsor it. So it's like Polaroki all on like shitty Polaroid like Bluetooth speakers and shit. <laughs> and we gotta invite uh, Doc Doc Foreign Caps, yeah, and Oscar Smaller Smaller was is whatever whatever his last name is. <laughs> Oscar Smaller Noski or something. Smaller Noski, yeah. We went to here. Yeah, I could see a karaoke bar getting wild. Like, I think that's like mostly because of alcohol, though. That's usually what makes them blow up. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> but yeah, if you can make it down, it'll be fun. I think it'll be a good time. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, I really should. And I'm probably going to be doing. I'm probably going to be doing a special episode there doing like a, a live like panel discussion <clears throat> so you could maybe even be part mm. of the panel if you want okay yeah, yeah. figure it out <laughs> totally man well dude i appreciate you hanging out with me for a bit it was really fun to yeah. you know see you again and it's been way too long so you know either den or Bay Area next year. We'll definitely catch up hopefully sooner than later. And uh, I hope you feel better with the, the Rona there. Kind of sucks. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm way better now. Like last Monday, dude, like when it hit me, I was scared that I wasn't going to wake up because, like, the way I was breathing, like, it was very bad. Dude. Like, because I have asthma and, like, it felt like my throat was just closing up every time I breathed. It was like every time, well, every time I laid down, it felt like it was just closing up and then I would have to get up and I lost like two days of sleep. Holy shit. That sounds fucking terrifying. And like, yeah. So when people say like, oh, COVID feels like dying, it's like, yeah, it really does feel like dying. I mean, for me, but I think it's just because I have asthma, but yeah, it was, it was bad, man. Like my breathing is like super messed up now. Like I can't, um... Like, the other day I was at work, because, like, I had tested negative Saturday and Sunday and Monday, so I went back to work, and um, I was wrapping a pallet, and, dude, like, after I wrapped the pallet, like, it felt like I ran, like, a mile. Like, my lungs were just, like, couldn't couldn't breathe right, so, so, yeah, I'm getting better, like, I feel better, like, I'm able to breathe, and I still have, like, congestion, but... Other than that, I'm good. It just feels like I have allergies right now. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're yeah. feeling a lot better. Dude, that sounds like you were going through some scary shit with that. Yeah, dude. I like I had to have my mom like wake me up in the middle of the night to make sure I was still alive. Like <laughs> that's how I scared scared I was because I was just like, damn, did I am I dead? <laughs> like you know, like Well, so, I'm I'm glad yeah, you're I'm not good. dead. I'm so good. Um, you know, please, <laughs> please don't die anytime soon. Um, if you can help yeah, it, no, I'm trying not to. Yeah, you know, wash your hands, yeah. stay safe out there. Don't don't cough on people. You have any uh, parting words you want to well, share with anyone? Um, just want to shout out 
the San Francisco Instant Film Photo Walk community. Shout out to San Jose and all the photographers out there that have been joining the photo walks. Shout out to Majonju. <laughs> Cause he's like always been a huge inspiration and helped me out a lot. And shout out to anybody that dropped in for the chat. Cause it's cool to see everybody come through and check this out. Cause I, I normally don't do live videos cause I'm self-conscious like that, I guess. <laughs> That's fair. Well, dude, <laughs> I, I don't I, know what to say. No, you did great. <laughs> I, I appreciate you spending some time with me. I've had a lot of fun and I look forward to hopefully seeing you uh, soon at a Policon near somebody. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me on the show, man. This is great. I was like kind of nervous at first, but now I'm just like, okay, Dude, like two homies talking to each other. <laughs> exactly. It's like a FaceTime with, with like homies and, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, Kinnick says, uh, Kinnick said, had a great time. So I'm glad. Oh, by the way, I do have, uh, cause he asked, yeah, I do have a photo that's on push film. Oh, I'll yeah. post it in Discord. Yeah, I'll post that in a bit. So probably right after this. Nice. So well, yeah, okay. shout out to everybody. I'm gonna let Mr. Mocha thank walk us out here, and thank you everyone for like hanging out with us. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was another good episode of the chat. Uh, stay safe out there. Try to stay out of trouble. Don't get COVID with the, like the whatever shit's going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like some scary shit um next week i'm gonna have jamie swick on so uh tune in next week to catch jamie swick on the chat and uh you know till then try to stay safe you know don't be a dick out there yeah thank you merlin thank yeah you, man. <laughs> thank you merlin all right thank take you, care everybody. thank okay. you for dropping by <laughs> bye, bye everyone <laughs>